Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and last week I shared some early insights into the creation of my current game project. It's about a small character made up of fire zooming between little worlds and destroying squishy enemies by dipping himself into flames and then crashing into them. I'm making this game using Unity, programming in C-sharp, and drawing all the art in Photoshop. So with that said, this week has been awesome, with a ton of progress made, which I'll be sharing with you right now. For those who haven't watched the first video in this devlog series, let me give you a quick recap. These videos are a way for me to share my journey as a game developer, to hopefully help and inspire you to go for it as well and your feedback on these videos is also a precious way to help me improve my game. So big thanks for last week's feedback everyone. Now 7 days ago I had some core gameplay elements in place, with the character able to jump between planets and destroy enemies if he's in his orange attack state. It was simple and already fun, but of course just the start of a large project I was hungry to keep improving and working on, so I began by making the player movement feel and look cooler. It was a little limp at this point, and it is a key part of the game after all. So for starters I added a simple trail effect, then a puffy burst of particles whenever the player moves to a new movement spot, and finally a stylized pattern appears at his feet when he takes off. Jonas Tyroller mentioned that the circles who act as the player's movement spots feel a little off and should perhaps be more grounded in the world. I agreed and so spent some time changing these into nice little trees and bushes. Now the planets look more interesting and it makes a little more sense. From there I decided it was time to implement some sound effects in the game. Not anything major or final, just a couple to make things feel more alive, which as usual always helps with motivation when working on longer projects. I used Audacity and a couple great websites full of free sound effects. And for a placeholder music, I used the fun tool Ecrits Music, which is basically an AI that randomly generates a soundtrack for you based on the choices you make up here. So after a couple hours, my world felt a little better with sounds to tickle the player's senses. On Tuesday I began playing around with different planet shapes, like this square and triangular one. Based on some ideas scribbled in my notebook, I also created movement spots that crumble away when collided with, as well as some vicious ones that spawn a spooky creature when moved on. I'm sure I'll be able to use these mechanics later on to create some very interesting randomized encounters. I also created a new enemy who shoots projectiles at the player, these are juicy monsters that must be quickly dispatched, or they might overwhelm you with their gooey shots. Having enjoyed piddling about with new enemies, I then got to work on more important things, adding different planet shapes. Until now, the player just hopped from one similar planet to another. They're all the exact same shape and size, only what's on them differed. So the square and triangular planets was a start, but for the game's first area, Field of Gold, I wanted to keep all planets looking round and soft, so I began work on that and came up with a few that really mix up the gameplay and make each run feel that extra bit unique. Now just in case this wasn't already clear, everything in this game is randomly generated. It's a roguelike where if you die you restart from the beginning and every planet, creature, treasure chest and fire is randomly cobbled together. However, I still have a lot of control over the planet's shape and the percentage of chance of a monster spawning over stars, for example, and obviously all the enemies' behaviors, stats, and more. So it's a mix of authored and random contents. Just like in many amazing roguelikes where a lot is randomly generated, but a great deal is also handcrafted with love and care. Anyway, as I suspected, working on a game with randomness and play is such a great deal of fun for the developer. I'm actually really enjoying my playtesting sessions, which isn't something I can say for the Dreadful Whispers, for example, which was a very linear, 
handcrafted experience I created with zero randomness. Now, my brother and friend Raphael helped me a little throughout the week by playtesting the game for the first time. To my relief, they seemed to really enjoy this very early version of the game, confirming my belief that this can really turn into a special little game if I keep it up. With the first area, Fields of Gold, nicely set up and balanced, it was time to improve area 2, Lushlands. Anyway, I added this spiky flower who patrols around the planet it's born on, a bulging creature who scales up and down, making it quite difficult for the player to navigate around him. There's a spooky mimic who transforms when the poor player moves to collect what he thinks will be a nice, cozy reward. And a personal favourite of mine is this monstrous nest-like planet who opens up to reveal a cast of jittery, flying monsters. All these new enemies and planet shapes make for a huge amount of possibilities when it comes down to what the player can encounter in a level. I simply place various spawn points leading up towards the sun and then drag and drop the different planets inside this array in the inspector and there's a chance any of these spawn in game. So the challenge is balancing things out. Which planet should spawn in such level? How can I not overwhelm the player with too many new foes while keeping things fresh and exciting. So a lot of playtesting and trial and error is coming up guys, but I love it. My plan for now is to have four main areas leading up to the final boss, maybe five, but the sheer amount of possibilities that I can see will definitely lead to entire secret areas. Of course I do need to calm down and not overscope, I'm still thinking relatively small and once I finish that initial vision, I can see where to go next. With that said, I also made a couple powers the player can purchase in the Merchant Worlds, which appears after every level. Here's a quick drawing to show you the journey the player goes on for now, so we're on the same page. As I said in the last video, this Merchant Worlds uh, is a place for the player to catch his breath and spend the stars he collects on his adventure to heal, gain extra hearts, and now buy powers. Such has the shield, which gives him an extra protection. Instead of taking damage, he now loses the shield, which will reappear in the next level. Next up, there's a power which lets the player deal double damage to bosses. There's a cute flying pet, which doubles the value of stars collected, so you're sacrificing some stars now to hopefully earn many more in the future. There's the classic double your speed merchant, and it really feels awesome and kind of badass hopping between worlds in ultra speed mode, destroying enemies at the speed of light. And lastly, I created a Wheel of Fortune, which is just a fun little risk-taking machine, and this dodgy looking thing who proposes you 150 stars for one of your hearts. So there's a couple cool choices to be made here, but many more to come in the following weeks. Lastly, I did slightly improve the visuals for the two current bosses, Black Swing and the Rotating Horror. And I came up with lots of new boss ideas, but other than that, I didn't have time to work more on these big dramatic encounters. You guys gave me lots of great suggestions on improving these, and I'll be taking it all into account. So again, thanks for that, and don't hesitate leaving a comment under this video with your thoughts about my progress this week. Be that on visuals or gameplay, anything you think might be helpful is welcome. Of course, what you say is limited by the fact that you haven't actually played yet, and keep in mind, everything here is a work in progress and is likely to change or be improved. My goal for this week is to keep balancing and improving area 1 and 2 and create the main structure and feel of area number 3. If I can sprinkle in a couple new powers, that's awesome too. I really want to get the game structure in place with four main areas, the main bosses, main powers, and then go back in and worry about details, start obsessing over balancing, make alternate bosses so the player isn't always fighting the same one every time he finishes an area and so on. So the objective is to get the game feeling complete, even if it totally isn't, and then turn that messy heap of rubble into gold, hopefully. So very exciting, nice bonus is that I'm getting all these other game ideas 
while working on this game, but of course I'll finish this first before anything else. So yeah, just get ready everyone to be entertained and delve into Blackthorn Prod's new worlds. Thanks as always to my patrons who support me financially every month and help me create videos and games full time. And with that said, see you soon for more game creation content. Good luck on whatever you're working on. Cheers.